Okay, this video is pretty dear to my heart. I, I feel bad making this video because the topic really hurts to talk about, but I actually think that's the reason I should talk about it. My opinion is negative and I'm warning you right now, if you like The Last of Us 2, this video is going to discuss and explore why The Last of Us 2, in its core, a bad sequel. This video will be divided into three parts. The first is how The Last of Us 2 affected me and my channel personally. The second part is what the game did wrong. The third is how the game can be better with a simple solution. Part 1. How The Last of Us 2 affected me and my channel personally. If you guys take a quick look at my channel, you would see my most popular videos are of quote unquote glitches on The Last of Us. Now, I've never said this, but I'm not particularly proud of these videos. Sure, they brought in the most views on my channel, but compared to the other videos I was making at the time, these videos had no edits. The commentary was all over the place. Here, he just came down here. There we go. All right, guys, so do you see where you are right now? Just press circle and you are in here all right so as you guys can see uh this is like the city or whatever the f this is i don't know what the f that is i don't know how this is I'm like so it was just videos to grab attention to the channel so hopefully somehow someday someone will look at my other content and actually see it for what it was i know i went on this long tangent and it has nothing to do with the topic but i'm just presenting evidence as to i've been so passionate about this game I completed the campaign about 9 times, 5 times on the PS3, and maybe 4 times on the PS4, and I never once touched the multiplayer aspect of the game until my last campaign playthrough of The Last of Us on PS4. Now once I made the switch to The Last of Us multiplayer, I never looked back to the campaign. But somewhere along the way, I got tired of playing the same game over and over again. But that's not to say I don't think the game is good. To me, The Last of Us is a masterpiece. The pace of the game, the character development, the soundtrack, and the voice acting Mwah, chef's kiss all around. I remember the first time I've ever seen this game was at my friend's house. He was playing it and I went over to his house to hang out. And the part of the game that got me to try The Last of Us was when Joel was picking up a ladder with Tess at the start of the game. Nothing spectacular about that scene, but I just had a feeling somewhere deep down that I just needed to try this game. So the very next day, I went and picked up the copy of The Last of Us and I was hooked, playing it every day until I reached the ending. Then doing it again and again because that's how much I love the game. There was no replay value if you think about it because The Last of Us is a linear game, meaning nothing you do changes the outcome of the game. But I loved it that much that I kept replaying. Then after making videos on The Last of Us, I got tired of new new updates, nothing really new to the game, nothing refreshing I can make videos on. So I was saving my quote unquote return for The Last of Us 2 multiplayer. I didn't post anything for I believe a year or maybe two years but i kept a long list of video ideas for the last of us 2 multiplayer like using only melee to kill people in multiplayer or i can't be seen by the enemy once or else i quit the game it it's stupid challenges to kind of keep the game fresh to say i was ready for the last of us 2 multiplayer is an understatement but the first news that i read about the last of us 2 was there was no multiplayer option for me and my channel this was the worst case scenario because my whole channel revolves around one thing and one thing only the Last of Us multiplayer. So I brushed off this news and started to focus on ideas for the campaign and getting excited only for the campaign. I started brainstorming ideas like playing on the easiest difficulty and then changing it to the hardest difficulty halfway through the game, or I can't kill zombies or clickers unless I have to. Then I was stupid enough to see the leaks about The Last of Us 2 and my heart dropped. Not because Joel was going to get killed, but how Joel was going to get killed. If you guys knew me personally, you would know that Joel is my favorite character by far. I knew he probably wasn't going to live by the end of the game, but to know he was going to die at the beginning really stunk for me. So in short, The Last of Us 1 is my favorite game of all time. The Last of Us 2 is my most disliked game of all time. Yes, I know that's a bold statement when Call of Duty Infinite Warfare exists, but The Last of Us 2 affected me negatively so much that it just made me hate the game and everything about it. Part 2. The flaws within The Last of Us 2. My first concern about The Last of Us 2 is clearly the plot. Now I understand not every story is perfect. One of my favorite movies is Inception. It has a great plot and it's an amazing film, but I will never agree that it has a perfect plot. Sure, it has a few plot mistakes here and there, which I can turn a blind eye to because it is minimal and you can easily dismiss it. But with The Last of Us 2, the flaws pile up to the point you can't really overlook it. So this game has different flashbacks, which are in different timelines. We see many games and sometimes movies do this trick and it's done well, it can really benefit this story. But with The Last of Us 2, we start off with playing Ellie for a bit, then we switch to Abby for a little bit, then we switch back to Ellie for a while, then we switch back to Abby for a little bit, then we switch back to Ellie for a while. Okay, do you see my point? I know where they were going with this. But the way Neil Druckmann did this story is just flawed. We follow Ellie in the present, 
then we follow Abby three days in the past, not to mention there's like 10 plus flashbacks in the game. This creates what I like to call the Last of Us 2 time dimension, where you have to guess in which timeline you're playing every time you switch a scene. If you're playing Ellie, then switch to Abby. You can either guess it's Abby from three days ago or Abby from three years ago. And if you chose three years ago, you have a high chance of being right. You just don't know. Naughty Dog took a big risk and I applaud them for their effort. However, I'm not going to applaud them for ruining my favorite game. See, if they really wanted to do a two main character arc, they could have easily followed the structure of The Departed. A movie follows an undercover mafia member in the police department and an undercover cop in the mafia. They're both chasing each other, but the climax of the movie is satisfying and it makes sense. But in The Last of Us 2, things are completely different. I cannot relate to Ellie, nor Abby, because Ellie is not the same person she was in the first game nor does she resemble Ellie from the first game. And I can't relate to Abby because she just killed my favorite character. My second concern of The Last of Us 2 is the theme of this game. See, in the first game, the main theme was the friendship and the family relationship that we, the players, experienced between Joel and Ellie. We went from Ellie being a brat and Joel who really disliked her and found her to be a nuance to Joel risking his life to save Ellie from being killed, even though she might have saved humanity. There was even a part of the story where Joel was considering giving up on the trip and letting his brother, Tommy, take over. I'll bite. Why bring her here? I was supposed to deliver to the Fireflies. The way I figure they're your boys, you finish the job, you collect the whole damn payment. I haven't seen a Firefly in years. But you know where they are. Now, I'm not asking for much, Tommy. I just want some simple gear, enough to set me on my way. What makes you think I'd do this for you? This isn't for me. Tommy, this is for your damn cause. My cause is my family now. But his love for her kept them together and allowed them to finish their journey. Where is this lab of theirs? It's all the way out, University of Eastern Colorado. Go big horns. Ellie, get off your horse. Give it on back to Tommy. I'm gonna hang on to this fella. That's all right with you. Oh, don't make me repeat myself. What are you doing? We went from a hopeful, loving Bond theme to vengeful and hopelessness theme in The Last of Us 2. I think the best way I can explain this argument is this. Imagine you just watched a buddy cop movie. The first movie followed these two best friends who are funny and joke around with each other, aka Bad Boys 2. Then the sequel follows an undercover cop who's in the mafia and a mafia member who's in the police department, aka The Departed. Do you see this sudden shift? We went from a joyful comedy action to a gritty trauma action. Two different movies and two different themes. If you build a product, you have a fan base for that product. But you cannot expect the same fan base to stay for another product because it is a different product for a different fan base. Now my third and final issue of The Last of Us Part 2 is Ab. Now, I know a lot of people hate Abby and they have every reason to hate the character, but for the actual voice actress to receive death threats is crossing the line. As a community, we should never cross that line. Please, for the love of everything, do not harass people for doing their job. But my issue with Abby is this. Right from the jump, without knowing much about her other than she's in a gang, she kills Joel. I will circle back to this point later on. But I hate how she was being portrayed. Do not get me wrong, if this was done right, she could have been a better villain than Marlene or anyone in the first game. But for our main character that we loved and adored for the first game, to die within the first few hours is a waste of great buildup to that character. It breaks a fundamental bond between the audience and such character. Here's an example. Infinity War is arguably my favorite movie of all time. Why you might ask? One character makes that movie for me. No other villain even comes close in relatability, intelligence, and the pure brute force in Thanos. Now when Thanos was introduced, he was hinted at first. We didn't know much about him, but we knew once Thanos came to Earth, all hell would break loose. Then, once Thanos shows up and stomps the Hulk so hard that Bruce Banner didn't even want to turn to the Hulk anymore, it sent a message that this villain is not to be played with. He isn't your average villain. He had a plan. Gather the Infinity Stones and halve the entire universe. He had a motive. He saw his own planet be destroyed by overpopulation, and if his planet listened to him, they would have survived. Thus, now he's trying to save the whole universe. He had intelligence in torturing his own daughter to get information from Gamora because she didn't want to see her sister suffer. He had feelings and emotion once he had to sacrifice his own daughter for the greater cause of all life. And once he snapped the gauntlet and kept his promise, the first place he went was to see Gamora. 
and she asked this. Did you do it? Yes. What did it cost? Everything. His reply showed remorse and feelings. So now you see what a good villain is, let me show you how Abby was introduced. She wasn't hinted, she wasn't shown in the advertisement of the game, she wasn't on the cover of the game, she wasn't even spoken about until the game, or dare I say, the leaks. When she was introduced to the game, it was something along like this. You know we can't go back empty handed, so let's keep going. Oh damn, I'm in trouble. Oh my god, this nice man helping me. Thanks for your help, gentlemen. By the way, what is your name? Oh, Tommy? Oh, Joel? Okay, give me the golf bat and let me kill this guy. Like, wait a minute, where's the build-up? Where is the excitement of the unknown? Where is the character development for this brand new character that we, the audience, have never seen before? Oh, what's that? We are getting her backstory after we kill the main character? Okay, no thanks, keep your story. This is not the only issue I have with Abby, but her story as a whole is just useless. There's no direction. It just feels like a side mission the whole time. This is a summary of Abby. First, she's hanging out at her camp base. Then she goes out on patrol for an hour of gameplay. Then she hears her friend Owen is in trouble, so she goes to help him. But then we get half an hour of flashbacks about Abby and Owen to introduce him and how he's important to Abby. By the way, this wasn't spoken until she really had to go rescue him. So you, you can just feel like it was just pushed in to tell you, hey, by the way, they really care about each other. You can tell, you know, that look at this flashback. Look, look, look. They're really close. Then we get back to Abby going through the city looking for Owen, but oh no, Abby's captured and needs help. Then we get another flashback to Abby and Owen. This time it adds literally nothing that the first flashback didn't add. Then she gets freed by her little brother and his friend. And then she finds Owen. She has a romance scene with him. Then she gets back to her brother and his friend the next morning. Not like, oh, hey, by the way, guys, thanks for helping me. But uh, just before I say thank you, let me go sleep with my lover and then I'll come back to you guys tomorrow. Like, what? Do you see how this has nothing to the actual development of the story of Abby? We only learned three things about Abby. One, she's in a base camp. Two, she has a brother. Three, she has a lover. All of which are unnecessary for what's about to come. He sees her brother's friend dead. Then she starts hunting down Ellie, which, by the way, up to this point, she was not interested in that whatsoever. It's almost like the narrative was forced just to give her an actual plot because they were out of things for her. It felt like the side mission of Abby's story is just, okay, it's over, what should we do now? Let's just cramp in Ellie because it's time to fight. It would have been so much better if the camp needed medicine because they have no supplies and she has to go through so much just to help her poor community out. Then she learns that Joel and Ellie are the people responsible and they're the one who killed her father and they're living so rich and safe. Which then she starts her revenge tour and tries to hunt them down. Or if her camp leader or forced her to go on an impossible mission. And nearing the end, Ellie steals the thing she was looking for. Thus Abby fighting her would make more sense. But because her story has no direction at all, it all felt like it was forced. Part 3. How the story could have been fixed. This is so simple, yet I can't believe I'm saying this. To fix all of this game problem is a pacing. A fellow YouTuber named The Closer Look made an awesome video about the same issue. I will definitely leave a link in the description below. Please check out the video. It goes in great depth, but I will summarize it in short and simple terms. You have to pace your story where your climax is at the end, not the beginning or the middle. The beginning is usually kept for backstories and dialogue between the characters. Then the middle of the story is when the story picks up, like when Thanos has the fifth infinity stone, so now it's a battle for the sixth one on Vision's head in Wakanda, right? So solution number one, create a timeline where both characters are on it, as in they are both in the past or both in the present. Then you alternate in between the characters every hour or so, giving us backstory about both characters. Then when they meet Joel in the middle of the game, not the beginning, Abby has that middle part of the game that drives Ellie to move the story forward and then she tries to get revenge on Abby which causes the climax of the story. Solution number two, play as Abby or Joel straight from the Last of Us ending. Have a dialogue here and there, then spend about six or so hours with Joel and Ellie exploring how their relationship will fall apart because Joel lied to Ellie. Once it does fall apart and Ellie's with her girlfriend, switch back to Abby give her the backstory she deserves, 
She was sad that Joe and Ellie killed her father at the hospital and she vowed if she ever sees any of them, she would kill them. Thus, she goes on this crazy revenge tour where she tries anything and everything to get the people who killed her father. Then she meets Joel and kills him. Again, mid or end game. That all depends on you, just not the beginning. Please leave the beginning for dialogue and backstory. Which then Ellie has to go on the same revenge tour. And we see Ellie make the same mistakes that Abby did. And then we alternate. And then we switch to Abby on how she regrets killing Joel and how that didn't bring her dad back. And then we switch back to Ellie and she sees she's determined to kill Abby. Not realizing that no matter what she does, it won't bring Joel back. So then, we have a story where we actually root for Ellie to fail because we don't want to see her become Abby. And this part is personal opinion time. This this is where I kind of go unscripted, unfiltered, I just go raw. <laughs> That's what you want to call it. Um, the Last of Us 2 is... Uh, fun fact, I actually didn't play the game. I watched gameplay by the game and the amount of times I had to skip every time something useless happened is insane. I, I think I went through the whole campaign in about three hours because so much useless things were happening i even like looked up um the last of us 2 campaign cutscenes because to me that's all that was important in the game really the cutscenes because who cares about the gameplay if i'm not playing right but to me it just felt like abby was created just to make the last of us 2 if that makes sense so they wanted to make the last of us 2 because obviously the last of us 1 made a lot of money and they wanted to make more money so they're reasoning was okay let's introduce a character that was kind of connected to that doctor that died at the end see what what really just mind boggles me is we killed so many people but they are focused on that doctor which we don't even know the name of in the first game and then all of a sudden we just have to believe that he has abby and then abby tries to kill joel because of that and then she just forgets about ellie like ellie doesn't even exist not knowing that ellie's just as a badass as Joel is, and then it's just pretty much a big cat and mouse games like Tom and Jerry, but on steroids, I guess. Um, to keep it real, I am really sad that The Last of Us turned out the way it did. I know a lot of people are like really passionate about the game, but I'm truly not, and I think it showed in this video. I feel sad about this game, but it is what it is. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you guys did, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe would mean the world to me these videos take so long to make and one subscriber just brings so much joy to my heart believe it or not and uh please comment down below telling me what you thought about the video uh i know it's a bit of a long one i think it's my longest video to date but uh if you guys like this format i'll definitely make more if you like shorter and uh kind of sweet to the point i'll definitely make more of that just comment down below and let me know what you want me to make and i'll see you guys in the next one peace